All right, let's get back to metal. Get to talk about this weekend's new releases. And speaking of getting back to metal, later on in the episode, I've got an important thank you for longtime subscribers, but let's get into it. Welcome, metalheads. I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbus. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's album art of the week. It's the weekend. That means we got new metal albums to talk about, and I'm bringing you my top five favorite. But before we jump into the top five, I've got just a couple of the big releases to talk about. Not wasting any of their momentum, there's a new record from Chatpile called Cool World. You might be wondering, how does a noise band out of the Midwest get big like this? Well, you write a song that resonates with a lot of people like Y off of their last album, God's Country, and that will propel you to these sort of heights. And lastly, before we get into the top five, there's a new record from Ad Infinitum called Abyss. If you're into that grand symphonic metal, this one's for you. But now let's jump into the top five. Coming in at number five. The Crown, the Crown of Thorns. This is melodic death metal out of Sweden. And this really reminds me, at least vocally, of early Devil Driver, that sort of gnarly aggression that they had. But the guitars give it a much wider palette. It's got sort of those Gothenburg mellow death leads, but then the drum beats have more of a thrashy punk rock vibe to them. And every now and again, they just throw in some surprises, like one song has a, a female dirge at the end, but they don't take these sojourns so often that it makes them progressive. They mainly focus on the heaviness, and y'all know I appreciate that. Coming in at number four. All right, here we go, I'll try. Oransi Pazuzu with Muntau Tuja. Mm, text is on the screen just in case, because I'm pretty sure I butchered that pronunciation. This is psychedelic black metal out of Finland. And this is the sort of record that I didn't even know I needed. Yeah, it's got the electronic stuff in it. And I've heard plenty of black metal with electronics in it. But usually that's like an accompaniment, some sort of ambient piece, a mood setter, sometimes even an afterthought. But this is front and center. This is like evil house music. I didn't know that I could feel compelled to both be unsettled and want to dance at the same time. It's kind of like being on a derelict spaceship and you see the event horizon coming and then you close your eyes, you open them and you're in a dingy underground dance club. Coming in at number three, Hell is Other People, more. Yeah, it takes on the screen because again, probably got that wrong. This is post black metal out of Canada. The mood on this one is penetrating and bleak really just drug me down and it's not so slow that I would consider it depressive black metal it's more mid-tempo it, but it, it has all these different textures to it and the drumming on this really inventive bass as well definitely not your typical you know, just beat the snare to death, sort of black metal drumming, really expressive drumming here, and just the way it made me feel. It's so hard to capture that sort of existential resignation on tape. They did it. That's impressive. Coming in at number two, Vomit Fourth, Terrified of God, Death Metal out of Connecticut. I didn't even know they had bands in Connecticut, but this one's awesome for sure. That good old school death metal, really hardcore sort of delivery to the vocals. And I love how they can slow down sometimes and just hit you with those thudding chugs. But then they can also just hit that breakneck speed and really border on tech death a little bit with the guitar work. Don't quite go full tech death, but just really slam home the death metal. Every one of these songs is tight as far as arrangements they get in they get it done and they move on to the next one they're ready to beat you all over the head one more time over and over and over until the album is done and that makes for good death metal and hey before we do number one i just want to say a quick thank you to longtime subscribers and watchers of heavy metal philosophy you all really showed your metal this week i was super impressed so 
On the podcast this week, I kind of went a little bit political. My aim was to remain apolitical and just make a point. But I know that if I just even mention certain political things, well, people will take sides, they will get offended. And as much as I try to stay neutral and just make a point, it's impossible. And I knew that was going to happen. So I was really anxious leading up to the release of this past Tuesday's podcast. As a matter of fact, I was so anxious that all weekend I was kind of waiting, hoping something else would happen in the metal community that I could talk about instead. I was hoping inspiration would strike and I really recorded that at the 11th hour because it's like, okay, well now it's Monday. Podcast is always on Tuesday. So I guess I'm doing this thing and I was just dreading dealing with the quote political discourse and that podcast aired and it first went out to subscribers that's the way youtube works it it goes to subscribers first before it goes out to random people out on the internet and almost every single one of you was super understanding and cool even the ones of you that disagreed with my point y'all were absolutely calm and measured about it said what you thought and it was just cool and I was so impressed with y'all and I sort of was like well man maybe I can talk about political stuff because I should just have more faith in the metalheads because y'all are obviously super cool well you know then then the podcast started getting out to wider audiences and yeah, there was some some mean people came in, but uh, for the most part, even they were mostly cool. And again, even some of the people that disagreed with me, we were able to talk calmly, not much in the way of ad hominem, but it still, it, it still got frustrating, you know, when it seems like we're living in two different worlds and witnessing two different realities. So I just, it's not something that I want to do very often. Um, I'm never going to lie about one of my positions in order to not be controversial, but I also don't have to be controversial just for the laws. You know, that's not what I intend. When I said in the episode that I want to keep it metal, I mean that, you know, if something happens like this again, that really pisses me off, of course, I'll talk about it for, but for the most part, I want to keep it metal. And I really appreciate those of y'all that were super cool. Even the ones that disagreed being super cool. That's, that's what I would hope this country is made of. And oftentimes it's not. And that's why I'm so misanthropic. But the metalheads out there are super cool. So I just want to thank y'all so much for being you. And now let's do number one. Coming in at number one. Dudes Magid with Omniverse Consciousness. This is avant-garde black metal out of Norway. And you might hear that band name and maybe mistake it or think of Dudeheim's Guard, who was one of my black metal albums of the year last year, Black Medium Current. Not the same band, but it does have two members from that band in this band. So it definitely has a similar sound at times. They both are that sort of cosmic psychedelia. But this record has way more just raw black metal passages. It definitely will go to some spacey places at times, but then it comes right back to the real primal stuff, which when you think about it, sometimes cosmic consciousness should be represented with a primal sound. It's not all woo-woo, spacey, nicey-nice. Sometimes nature and the universe can be nasty, and that's what this record is absolutely loved it a shining example of what i mean when i say that black metal is capable of being high art absolutely love this record you will too if you check it out but we're not done with the fun yet because we still got dealer's choice and the album art of the week all right i got a fun dealer's choice pick for you this week i chose restless dreams with their self-titled ep and this is made by Corey parks from grave ripper Longtime subscribers will know that I love me some Grave Ripper. And here on his solo project, he made an instrumental album that was inspired by Silent Hill 2. Perfect in time for Halloween. Now, when I say to you that a record is inspired by a horror piece of media, you might assume that there's going to be lots of synths and creepy, odd instruments and stuff like that. Nah, he keeps it metal. This is guitars. This is a band and 
still manages to make it sound creepy, heavy at times, absolutely killer stuff here. You could put it on at your Halloween party. You could also lay back with headphones and do intentional listening thanks to the real clever musicality of this one. And plus, I just love Grave Ripper and I'll support him any way I can. Check out Restless Dream. For my favorite album art this week, I chose Cemetery Skyline with Nordic Gothic. This is gothic, melodic, death metal, and you might recognize the singer. It's the dude from Dark Tranquility, but I'm here to talk about this art. This is killer, and I love that you could interpret this in multiple different ways. You could interpret it literally and think that this building that's shaped like a cross is also doubling as a headstone, and so therefore you have a cemetery skyline or you could also interpret it you know you have this urban hellscape you know this cyberpunk sort of image with these high-rise buildings and then it's also dominated by a christian symbol there's so many different ways you can interpret this which makes for killer album art and then of course killer album art going with a veteran metal musician like this should be no surprise but i was still blown away by this one and speaking of blown away i was blown away by the response to this week's podcast i complained about the culture war polluting my favorite art form metal if you're interested in that just click right here but most importantly oh and before i say the catchphrase if you want metal updates without the politics 99% of the time, I'm not talking about politics here. I love metal more than anything else. So don't be afraid to subscribe. But most importantly, read philosophy, listen to metal. I love you.